Hi everyone, today we will be talking about the breath origin in asynchrony or mechanical ventilation. As you may probably know that asynchrony may involve different phases of the breath. It may involve the trigger mechanism resulting into either ineffective triggering or auto-triggering. It may also involve the initial flow rise that may be suitable for the patient's demand or not before it gets to the pressurization where that pressure may be suitable to deliver the adequate tidal volume for the patient or it may not be at that level. The cycling mechanism where we change from inspiration to expiration may be a reason why the patient has asynchrony. And this is related to the relationship between the ventilator inspiratory time and the patient's inspiratory time or the neural inspiratory time. This neural inspiratory time could be longer than the ventilator inspiratory time resulting into double triggering or it could be shorter than the inspiratory time of the ventilator resulting into delayed cycling. So we will be talking about four different types of insynchrony in relation to the breath origin. We will talk about ineffective efforts, auto-triggering as uh, a manifestation of problem with the trigger mechanism. And we will be talking about delayed cycling and double triggering as a manifestation of a problem with the cycling mechanism. So the first one is ineffective efforts. We will, we will be looking at this in these cases by looking at three different graphs. The first one is the flow over time. The second one is pressure over time. And the third one, is the esophageal pressure and we will start by looking at the esophageal pressure over time you can see that every drop in the pressure here is resulted into ventilator breath there's a drop here there's a ventilator breath here similarly in this one however in this one here there's a drop in the esophageal pressure indicating that the patient has effort. However, this effort was not effective in triggering the ventilator. So you can see the drop in the pressure here. You can see the rise in the flow, but it did not trigger a ventilator breath. Similarly, in this breath here, you can see a drop in the esophageal pressure with a rise in the flow without the ability to trigger the ventilator. So the, this is ineffective triggering. The sh threshold is not achieved. The triggering tr threshold is not achieved. achieved. Resulted into one patient's breath and zero ventilator breath. There is no breath from the ventilator, but the patient had inspiratory effort. The second case is auto triggering if you take a look on this graphs you can see that there is no inspiratory effort by the patient here however there is ventilator breath so the patient did not trigger the ventilator breath the ventilator was triggered automatically you can see a rise in the pressure inspiratory flow and expiratory flow. Compared to this breath that is triggered by the patient, you can see the drop in the esophageal pressure resulted into the patient's breath, the ventilator breath and inspiratory expiratory flow. So in this breath, similar to this breath here, where there is no drop in the esophageal pressure, is auto-triggered. The triggering threshold was achieved with no patient's effort. 
that means that patient had no inspiratory effort, zero breath from the patient, but the, the ventilator delivered a breath to the patient that is auto-triggered. This could be because of a leak in the circuit, cardiac oscillation, or even secretions. The third case is delayed cycling. And this is, as we mentioned earlier, results from the difference between the mechanical inspiratory time and the neural inspiratory time. So by looking at these graphs again, in this case, we uh, can easily see that this patient here, there is a, a ventilator breath started by the patient, resulted into positive pressure, and this is the inspiratory flow. The inspiratory flow was decelerating before it rose again by another inspiratory effort by the patient indicated by the negative esophageal pressure here. So that means that the mechanical inspiratory time was longer than the neural inspiratory time. The ventilator did not finish the inspiratory, the inspiration. However, the patient resulted into another breath, ended up with two breaths from the patient and one breath by the ventilator. This is one and this is a second one. However, the ventilator delivered only one breath or the ventilator triggered only one time. The second breath occurred while the ventilator still delivering the first breath. So this is delayed cycling. The inspiratory time on the ventilator is longer than the patient's inspiratory time resulted into two breaths from the patient, one breath from the ventilator. The last one is double triggering. In this case, is showing double triggering nicely here, where you can see the esophageal pressure in this case here is negative and is prolonged. The neural inspiratory time is longer than the mechanical inspiratory time. Inspiratory time set on the ventilator is only to this point here. So the ventilator cycled off into expiration. However, the patient was still in inspiration. And this second drop here, or the continued drop in the pressure, resulted into a triggering again the ventilator and delivering another breath. You can see this on the floor nicely. This is first breath that is trying to cycle off. However, the ventilator was triggered again without having the expiratory phase. The second breath here is only one breath. You can see this is the patient's negative effort. Negative pressure resulted from his effort resulted into one breath only. The inspiratory time here is adjusted to accommodate the patient's need. So in this case, it is double triggering, and this is because of the mechanical inspiratory time is less than the neural inspiratory time. This results into one patient's breath and two ventilators breaths. To summarize everything together, we have triggering problem here, either ineffective triggering or auto-triggering. The ineffective triggering where the threshold is not achieved is associated with one patient's breath and zero ventilators breath. 
the auto triggering where the threshold achieved with no patient's efforts results into zero patient's breath and one ventilator's breath. The second mechanism is involving the cycling of uh, from inspiration to expiration. The first one is delayed cycling where the mechanical inspiratory time is longer than the, than the patient's or the neural inspiratory time resulting into two patient's breaths and one ventilator's breath. Double triggering is uh, associated with mechanical <coughs> inspiratory time shorter than the patient's inspiratory time and this will result into one patient's breath and two ventilators breath. If you need more details about asynchrony you can refer to the other videos in this uh, uh, YouTube channel. Thank you very much.